Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're going to get jump into getting some painting done. It's been a while since I've shot some color and clear for this truck, but uh, I need to get some of these small parts that have been accumulating uh, done and out of the shop. So I've got a whole bunch behind me here that need to be painted black, and I've got some other parts set up that need to be painted blue. So uh, let's jump over and take a look at uh, how I've held some of these parts and the plan for today. Okay, let's check out some of our uh, parts holding here. So the vent that goes right in front of the windshield there on the cowl, I, I can rotate this around and then get all the way around it and paint blue up inside everywhere and then just kind of rotate it back and make sure I get the exterior really nice. Uh, same idea here for this small vent that goes on the driver's side. Now the mirror arm here, what I did, that's a quarter 20 bolt in there captured and I wrapped some tape on it and then I just kind of threaded this on to those uh, to that tape and it's held on there really strong so I can get that mirror arm nice and covered all the way around. I've got a couple of parts over here just sitting on the that's a radiator support and that's just underneath the grill. I just got them sitting on a rack that's easy easy to do right there. Steering column I got it hanging from the ceiling and I just put uh, I found a I couldn't find a nut to fit but I found a lug nut that fits and that is put a washer and wrapped it with some wire and just hung it from the ceiling. I'll get some tape around that before I spray. And that's just, it's heavy enough, it'll keep itself still. Now over here was a different story. I've got a lot of different things going on here. My many years of painting small weird parts came in handy. So these arms right here, these are the supports that go from the firewall, the center of the firewall out to the inner fender wells or the fenders. So I just got them on some standoffs right here and some small washers, the bolts uh, that bolt them on will cover anything where we don't get coverage here. And they're on there nice and tight, screwed right down to the plywood. I've got the plywood wrapped in some paper. Um, same thing for the other one. And of course you've seen the way I mounted the shifter. I just took a block of wood, drilled a 5 8 hole, screwed the block of wood down and just poked that down inside there. And I got a couple of screws, four screws here that hold these pieces on. Uh, they need to be black. So I just drilled some holes and poked them down in there and then just some miscellaneous covers here. These go uh, by the fenders and that's the heater hole cover, but I don't think it's gonna use, but get used, but he wants it painted, the owner. And then these hold the steering column in. They're heavy enough, they're just gonna sit there. Now this is the part that holds the shifter selector arm onto the steering column. And when I primed it, I thought I got it good, but I had to come up with something new. So I put a standoff up underneath there and now that's held in midair like that. And the screw is deep down inside the hole. So once it's mounted, you won't see where the paint isn't. And the, these are the parts I think go underneath the seat. They're just sitting up on some blocks and I got a screw down into the plywood. And that's the really advantage of using plywood. Just drive those wood screws in. That goes inside the cab on the kick panel. And here's the lever for that vent over there, I believe. And I just got a standoff on it and a wood screw and I can paint all the way around it. Now this one is the part that goes for the, the headliner at the back window, I believe. And uh, if you saw before, you saw that where I held it just uh, down, but I had it way low onto the uh, plywood here and I couldn't get up underneath it like I wanted to. So now I just screwed a couple of one by one blocks onto the plywood and then used a piece of quarter inch copper tubing, ground the head small on the screw. As you can see there, it's just tiny head now and it's just bigger than that hole, so it holds it. And it's on there pretty stout now. And then the other one, I just used the same idea I used before. This is for the headliner where it splices it, and it's just on those little straps. Instead of clamping them, I screwed them down this time. So it's all looking pretty good. And we are about ready to spray some blue. Okay, so the plan today is to paint the blue. I've got these two panels that need to be blue. I've got these two parts over here or three parts over here that need to be blue. So I'm gonna spray the base coat blue on these today and then we're gonna button up the shop and then tomorrow will come out. We'll move these parts out so they don't get any overspray and then we'll spray all the other ones that need black. Then once those flash off and they sit there 30, 40 minutes, then I can mix up some clear, bring the blue parts back in, tack everything off, 
and just mix one batch of clear and spray everything with clear. So let's move over to the bench and, uh, and we'll get some blue mixed up. Okay, today we don't actually have to mix any blue because all those other parts I painted, the fenders, the inner fender wells, running boards, tailgate, bed, all that stuff, I always had a little bit of blue left over and I poured it off into another container. Now, the base coat I'm using does not have reactive reducer or hardener in it. It's just reducer. So uh, you, once it's mixed up, it won't go bad. You can actually order it from the paint store RTS, which is ready to spray. They will actually mix the reducer in it for you, uh, seal the can, doesn't matter if it's a quart or a gallon or whatever. They'll mix it up for you and all you have to do is pour it through a strainer into your gun and start spraying, so, which is really convenient. Uh, but I didn't do that. I ordered just the, solid, the color unmixed and then I put the reducer in it myself. So I always have some left over. So what I do, I poured it off knowing I got a lot of little parts to, to paint. Now, I don't, I don't wanna pour this back into the gallon because uh, that would dilute it and I wouldn't know what the mix ratio is. But I put it in this old salsa container um, and uh, the plastic is sturdy enough. It's uh, polypropylene, I believe. And so the solvents don't eat it at all. And so I sealed it up airtight and so I've got, uh, you know, a couple of cups in here or so, probably enough to spray all these parts. And if not, I'll mix up some more blue. But it just, this uh, base coat allows me to save it uh, when I have extra when I'm done spraying. And then I can use it for other little parts, you know, along the way. Or actually for a body panel for the first, you know, coat or, you know, whatever. And then mix up some more. So think about that when you're using your base coats. If you're not using a base coat that takes a hardener or reactive reducer, if it does, it's the pot life, once, it, once you mix it, you have to toss it. You can't store it because it'll just turn to jello on you. So this stuff doesn't. And so we're gonna uh, just stir this up real good. Make sure no uh, thinner evaporated. If so, I'll add some more reducer and then we'll mix it up, pour it in the gun and start spraying. Okay, to shoot the blue today, uh, I'll be using my smaller gun. This is a starting line gun, but it's the smaller one that comes in the kit. Um, and it should work pretty well. Now, the two big panels I need to spray, this gun's a little too small for that, but I, I'm sure I can make it work. Um, I'm more concerned about painting up and around those two vents and making sure that I can get up inside there without blobbing paint up on you know, a, a lip or something sticking out. And that'll happen, you're trying to spray down inside here and you're getting a lot of paint on the edges, uh, which is, you don't, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want that buildup on there. It could get a run or it just could build up so much that it causes a problem later on. So by using the smaller gun, I can get up inside all those little areas and get, make sure they get good coverage uh, and look good. So when we spray the clear on, it'll all look great. So we're just gonna uh, go ahead and pour this in. My, handy dandy gun holder still doesn't have my little attachment I keep talking about making so we're just going to stir this paint up really well it looks good and then I'll just hold uh, I'll have the holder hold my strainer and I'll just hold the gun up underneath it to start I'll fill it up about halfway then I'll just bring that underneath and let it drip on it right in the container all right we're ready to go all we have to do is uh, tack everything off real well and air it off and we're ready to spray. Okay, we're about ready to go. Uh, I'll use my dedicated airline that I only use for spraying color and clear uh, instead of the other one. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll go through with the gun uh, adjusted fairly tight and try to get up in all those areas of those uh, vents to make sure they got really good coverage. Then I can move over to the bigger parts. We really only have to spray to cover. So once I feel like it's got, it looks really good, it's all blue, then, um, then we'll be done. We'll just let them dry and tomorrow we'll jump back on it. Now getting down inside all these little spots inside the, around these vents is very difficult. So um, you gotta just take your time. Even if it takes four coats, just super light coats to get that in there, 
that's what you got to do. The last thing you want is, you know, pop that vent open and it not have really nice blue coverage up underneath, underneath there. So I'm going to let that dry really well. I hit a few spots, kind of double, triple coated, trying to get down into a corner. So I'm just going to let it flash off pretty good. We'll move over, adjust the gun, get a little bit better coats or get a base coat on these uh, big pieces. And then we'll come back and do the exterior on these uh, and a little bit more on the inside. Okay, you can see right here where I'm uh, trying to make sure I get those edges really well. Now that's something you don't want to ignore. You think you just paint the top and the paint will wrap around the corner and get the edge, but uh, it doesn't. So the worst thing you can be B is be done and then looking at your part and realize that there's light spots on the edges. So I always go around and make sure the edges are done first. Uh, there will be some wrap over when you're spraying. The paint will wrap around the edge uh, when the air pulls around it, but you want to make sure you get a nice coat in there. Now also I'm trying to map out here and keep in mind I've got a GoPro in my hand while I'm doing this. So I'm trying to lay out so I can get nice even passes and I'll keep change in my angle to make sure I can get down like in here where I make sure that's done really well instead of trying to reach backwards towards myself I just reach on the other side and I get it covered really well and then I'm gonna go across the top here where I can reach and then I'll start laying in the field so try to map out your uh, how you're spraying you can see the gun is spraying very even uh, get your gun adjusted really nice so you get a nice even pattern and then you don't have to fight it while you're painting so just keep those little tips in mind and uh, your parts will come out a lot better and you won't have any light spots that you've got to uh, come back and fix later. Okay, you can see down in here how hard it is to get down inside here. So we're just going to keep blasting away nice and lightly until we get that covered down inside there really good. It's just going to take time. See down in this corner down here, it's really hard to get down in there so I'll have to focus on just the spots I couldn't get the first pass and then we can try to fog the rest in and hopefully we'll get good coverage up down inside there. Okay to show you how I have the gun adjusted to get down inside those tight areas here's the pattern I'm using right now. See that? That is just, it's mostly a ball but it's not a squirt gun. You can see where I was adjusting it here. It's way too much volume, no air. So what we want is just a small amount of fan pattern and a very little, very little volume. And what that does is allows you to keep going over those spots and um, without worry about putting a run in there. So I'm going to let that flash off a little bit. I'm going to step outside, wait for the air to clear, and then we'll, uh, we'll get another coat on it. Okay, so we've got uh, two or three, actually three or four good light coats inside that vent where it was hard to reach. So I'm feeling really good about that. The other vent, uh, I've got all the little round, the little nooks and crannies there. So I think I've got really good coverage there. Mirror arm, that's easy peasy, no problem. These two uh, panels back here, I got a little heavy handed down in a low spot there. So I get a little more uh, base coat than I wanted to for the first coat. So we're gonna have to let that set a little bit longer it's still cool in the shop right now uh, and so it, it's flashing off a little slower so I just got to be patient so I'm gonna let those flash off I'm gonna adjust the gun pattern out a lot bigger and then I can start putting the first uh, coats on the exterior of those vents and then hopefully these uh, panels over here will be ready for their coat and then we can get one more good coat on everything probably need three coats on everything I'll put two coats and then um, a control code on across everything and then that should be about it. Okay let's get another code on these. Okay, these are looking pretty good. I think I'm just going to put a control coat over the top. We'll let it flash off a little bit. And then we'll just put a control coat over it. I like to use a light. Uh, for one thing, my eyes aren't what they used to be, but it really helps you find those 
those spots where you just didn't get. So get yourself a light light like this one. I, I think this one I got from Lowe's, but uh, it does a great job. Let you find, especially on these dark colors, really hard to see. Looks pretty even to me. So we're gonna let it flash off a little bit. I'll put a control coat over this and the other parts and we'll be done. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, I've rolled the cab out of the shop uh, and I've got just about everything ready to go except I need this rack to sp spray, a, hang a couple of parts on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna take these parts off and I'll, these rods just slide right out. So I'm just gonna take these and uh, find a safe place to put them. And then I, I can use the other rods for the last pieces and then we can start spraying some black. So let me get these out of the way, get all this stuff blown off and tacked off and then we'll start mixing up some black. Okay, we don't need much black to spray these little parts and black covers really well. So you don't need a lot. All you need to do on base coats is just spray to cover. Once you get a good two coats on and everything's covered, you can stop right there. So black is gonna cover really well. So I'm gonna only mix up a little bit. Uh, now I'm gonna be using a little tiny mixing cup today. It doesn't have, this base coat is one-to-one -one just like the blue. So one part color, one part reducer. And it doesn't have a one-to-one -one on here. So, but it always has ounces and milliliters. So uh, I've taken a Sharpie and I marked off, marked off three ounces. Then I'll pour in three more ounces up to six ounces of reducer. We'll mix it up well, get it in the gun and start spraying. Okay, we've got everything tacked off, ready to go. I'm just hanging, this is the mechanism for the vent that's right in front of the windshield. I just got it hanging by a wire. I'll just kind of hang onto the, the uh, threads right here on this bolt and just spray this thing all over. Same idea, I kind of got it up here on a bolt sticking through with some tape, keeping it from falling off. And that's the hood latch. Steering column, like I said, I just got it hanging from wire. That's gonna be easy to spray. And then these parts have all been dusted off and tacked off and ready to go. I pulled the tape off of here. I, I didn't want that high build primer on there, uh, but we'll, we'll spray black on there and they'll cover the whole thing. And then these other parts I've just got laying here. So we're ready to go. These are up high enough so I can get up underneath there really well and get those painted all the way around. And the same thing goes for this piece here. So it should go fairly quickly. All I have to do is turn the exhaust fan out on to suck all the fumes out and we're ready to spray. Okay, I went ahead and put a second coat on. I didn't have the cameras rolling. So you can see we're getting pretty good coverage now. We're gonna throw another light coat on it, make sure we get everything covered. So everything's looking pretty good. We're gonna let this uh, flash off all the way. And we'll hit it again. And that should be about it. Um, if I was painting over a darker primer, I wouldn't have to put three coats, but we are painting over uh, light gray. So I wanna make sure I get everything covered really well. It's still pretty cool in the shop, so I don't think we're gonna be able to spray clear on these today. We're gonna to have to wait till tomorrow. But everything looks pretty good. I'll take the flashlight, uh, the light, and I'll look for light spots. Um, I can see this panel needs a little bit more, um, but we'll get that on the last coat. But I'll take the fl uh, light around and uh, double check everything to make sure everything looks good. Okay, I brought all the other parts back in. We'll tack those off. All the black parts looking good. I got the blue parts on the uh, rack. With the black parts, everything's gonna get clear. So I think I'm gonna go eat lunch and then I'll decide if I'm gonna spray clear in about an hour or so. We'll check this uh, black to make sure it's good and dry. If it's not, we're gonna let it sit overnight and then we'll sp spray clear tomorrow. So other than that, everything's going according to plan, except the weather. I was hoping it'd be a little warmer today.
Okay, uh, took a two hour lunch to let everything dry, relaxed a little bit. Uh, temperatures actually come up a little bit. Um, so I brought everything back in. I've got it uh, tacked off, blown off. Everything's ready to go. Now, uh, a lot of these pieces, the black pieces, are all just interior pieces. So they'll just get two medium coats of clear just to protect them. Uh, these uh, blue parts, uh, this in particular will get three coats, probably that, probably just two coats, we'll see. Um, but the exterior pieces, the two covers, definitely will get three coats of clear. Um, and then all the, like I said, all the other black parts will just get two. So all we got left to do is uh, mix up some clear, uh, turn on the exhaust, exhaust fan and load up the gun and uh, start spraying. So let me get to that real quick and I'll bring you back when we're ready to spray. Okay, we're about ready to spray. Uh, I've got the cameras back a little bit farther. Uh, this shop is killing these cameras, so I'm trying to keep them a little bit farther back, keep the overspray and uh, especially clear off of them. So let me, uh, let me fire up the fan, the exhaust fan, and I'll load up the gun and we'll get spraying. All right, so like usual, I'll keep the gun pattern really tight so I can get up and around all those nooks and crannies, and then that's it. I'm just going to hit them once, and then, uh, then we'll open the fan up and uh, just work on getting a good medium wet coat on everything. Okay, that's one coat. Got the backsides of all the hard to reach parts, so it's uh, looking pretty good. Okay, last coat of clear, and uh, we'll be done for the day. Okay, we are all done spraying. Just got to clean the gun. All these parts got two coats, easily two coats. And they're all nice and shiny. Got the uh, vent covers, they're looking really nice. I don't know if you can see, but that clear laid down really nice on that cover. So we're only going to polish these two pieces right here, just these two. So if you see me polishing anything other than those two, give me hell. These parts don't really matter, they're just really nothings. And then we got the mirror arm. The steering column came out really nice. I put a third coat on that just because I had some in the gun. It might take a little bit of abuse, so went ahead and put another coat on there. And these came out really nice right here. A little bug just landed right there in the clear, little bastard. But uh, I'm not polishing these pieces, I'll just rub him out. Um, the, the grill covers most of that anyways, you won't even see it. And there's a couple of nubbins in on this piece here, but I'm not polishing those, so that is it. 
Okay, that just about wraps up for this video. I've got the gun clean. I've got three coats at least on all the blue and two coats on the black. There's a lot of parts here. I'm really happy to get this done and uh, we're gonna let these dry and get it back to the owner so they'll be out of my hair and I can focus back on the cab and we gotta tackle those two doors. So I'm really looking forward to get some momentum built back up. Hopefully the weather cooperates. So um, don't forget to send me those pictures of your projects. I'd love to see what you're doing. Uh, just put project in the email to me. Uh, I'll put my email in the description down below and uh, I'd like to post some of those at the end of every video. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.